when you talk about World War II, it's easiest to focus on the men and women who serve in uniform. But really, Texas as a state proves to be a huge strategic asset to the United States and the Allied cause in the war. See, Texas is sitting on top of huge oil reserves. In fact, R.L. Hunt hits pay in 1930 around Kilgore, and um, it proves to be one of the biggest oil reserves on Earth. In fact, there's 2,000 wells pumping around Kilgore by 1932. Uh, this one field produces more oil than the entire rest of the state combined, so much so that it begins to even crash the price of oil in the 30s. But there's new regulations that are thrown in to, to curb production and to stabilize the price. And really, it's the Texas Railroad Commission that takes the lead on that. So oil is huge. There's also other oil uh, discoveries that happened in the 30s that put Texas into a very key position to support the United States in its war effort. Now, the Big Lake oil field had already been discovered on state lands uh, that were feeding into the permanent university fund. I mean, this is in the early 20s when Big Lake comes in, uh, Santa Rita number one. Uh, and these dollars actually go in to help underwrite uh, Texas, well, the University of Texas uh, and Texas's higher education landscape. But there's also other discovery wells that come in around Midland and Odessa. That's the beginning of the Permian Basin discoveries. Well, World War II does nothing but rocket those discoveries. Uh, the need for crude oil and the support of the war effort really spur discoveries across the Permian Basin. And it's World War II that develops the West Texas oil industry uh, to the nth degree almost. Well, it's not just Texas oil, but it's also Texas oil men that come to support the United States during the course of the war. Uh, one of the things that happens during the war is the Northeast starts to freeze. And the reason being is that they have to ration their supply of oil because they need it to also fuel ships and uh, machines of war. So all of a sudden there's a shortage of oil in the Northeast, but a glut of oil in Texas. Now, remember there was a similar circumstance when it came to beef cattle in the 19th century. Lots of cattle in Texas. Not so much cattle in the north. What did Texans do? Drove the cattle to the market. Guess what? The new 20th century cowboys, the oil men, do something very similar. Um, they essentially bring Texas oil to the northeast. They want to uh, essentially turn the furnaces back on and also pre-position oil for the U.S. invasion of Europe. Uh, the guy who's really the engineer behind this, or the architect of all this, is Jubal Richard Parton of Madisonville. J.R. Parton. J.R. Ewing? Well, there may be a connection there. J.R. Parton of Madisonville is the guy that says, you know what, we can drag a pipeline all the way from Texas to Philadelphia. Uh, in fact, he drags two. They're known as the Big Inch and the Little Inch. And these this phenomena of building a pipeline all the way across the United States is unparalleled in American history. Well, at the end of the day, Texas and its oil reserves are so important to uh, the Allied war cause or the cause of the Allied war effort that um, you can say that Texas helped win World War II. If you take a look at a map of Texas, you will see how many counties have petroleum production as part of their economic landscape. There's a lot. And Texas not only supplied men and women to the front, but helped fuel those airplanes, ships, and tanks at the same time.